Okay, guys. Okay, once again, thank you for coming on to this webinar, right? Session four. You know, so the first three sessions. For those who are not here, we talk about overview. Overview is talk about relationship from single singlehood to a dating courtship to marriage to parenthood. Because what I realize is that a lot of times when we think about dating, it's just so narrow. And I think about marriage is all about marriage, but actually one step built upon the other. And also something that I covered in the first session is also about um, family gener generation patterns and healthy life groups, because how, you're, how you are raised with your family is actually a huge indicator of how you're going to view your relationship. Okay. So second one I'm talking about is healthy relationship. We just talked about that. The third one last week was talk about physical intimacy. You know, talk about sex, talk about, you know, stay away from porn. So, so I have recorded, it's all on the website. If you guys want to take a look, please, I highly recommend because one thing flows to another, you know, so, so this will be it. Okay. Let's get started. So what are my objectives for this session? Two things, right? For I, my Decide is for you to honor God by choosing decisions that's based on political truths and not on culture or one's feeling. Now, I'm not saying feelings are wrong, but sometimes they not, may not be right. So you got to have a good discernment, right? Because sometimes it's like, I want to really want that, that get that girl, I want to like, get that guy, you know, and that may cloud how we make a decision, okay? And second is list practical ways on how to date in a way that honor God and develop healthy relationship. Okay, so I'm going to get started off with saying the do's and don'ts like the list. And then what we're going to do is going to break down how me and Weja got together. Okay, so that's why I suggested for you guys to watch our video, the 10, I mean, 10, 12 minute video of how we got together, because I'm going to use that as a base. Okay, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to talk about it as each point of our relationship, how we got together. And then from there, I'm going to break down, you know, based on the do's and don'ts and some reflection of like, mm, is this how do we approach relationship? Okay, so. So let's get started. Wow. Okay. You know, one problem I see in dating and courtship, you know, I don't see any problem with dating and courtship, but the problem is that it's not mentioned in the Bible, right? Like, so it's like, how do we, you know, you know, I follow Jesus, but how do I use the Bible as a way to like date and courtship? And if you notice about anything about relationship in the Bible, unfortunately, it's mostly broken, right? Like I start from the beginning, Genesis, okay? Adam and Eve, right? Eve was deceived and Adam being Eve for, for, for his in, you know, neg negligence, right? So he blamed God for, for Eve, right? So that's one, right? Abraham and Sarah, right? Sarah, you know, Abraham, Sarah, you know, Ishmael, right? You know, they took the medicine in their own hand, you know, next, next, next generation, Isaac, Rebecca, and Jacob, and Esau. You know, if you know the Bible, you know that, you know, it's a very broken family, right? Isaac favor Esau and Rebecca favor Jacob, right? And you know, Jacob's a deceiver and, and, and you know, so it's a lot of brokenness. Jacob and Leah and Rachel and Rebecca. Okay, I don't have to say anymore. Like you read those chapters about their lives, about how the wives and, and competing one another. That's enough. Right? And this is just only in Genesis, right? So but yet I would say actually the Bible has a really good resource on how to approach relationship. The reason is it doesn't have like specific rules. Like it doesn't say like, oh, can I use a dating app, right? Because that's people will ask me, right? Can I use a dating app? Can I date online, right? You know, specific questions. But yet, it focuses on principles regarding a relationship, especially how it honors God, and that for me is a is a is a key. You know, it focuses on relationship with us, me, us and God, right? Through Jesus, and then it's also relationship with one another, right? And so. Uh, you know, when it comes to people asking questions about dating relationship, which is fine, right? The problem is it's hard to answer, right? For example, um, well, for example, like dating app, can I use a dating app, right? If I don't know you, I gotta give a broad answer, right? This is what I would say. If um, I say, I don't think there's anything wrong with it if you seek the Lord and the Lord have peace. But on the other hand, if you're using a dating app like, looking for your dream, you know, dream spouse or dream boyfriend, girlfriend and, and going online, like shopping, like, you know, like, like a car or, or a computer or, or, or a dress. Then I would say maybe you shouldn't use it because it's, you're just doing a checklist for your own good. But on the other hand, if you are like 30s, 40s or even 50s or 60s and you're single and you really want to be in a relationship and there's really no one within your network that are suitable, then, you know, I say pray about it, 
and you're peace, I don't see why not, right? So, so it's very situational, and because I don't know each of your history, so it's very hard for me to say like, you know, yes or no to these circumstances, right? I would, I, I would say it, but it really got a really long winded answer, it should cover everything, right? You know, not that we, sh we shouldn't add this question, not that I won't answer it, but that's how I approach it, right? So, so, um, okay, so let me, you know, just share a bit about Chinese dating and courtship. I mean, you guys probably know this, right? External, peer pressure, family, society, expectation. Oh, sorry, just like my wife just came online, okay? So, so she will just chime in whenever it's, it's needed, which is great because you're going to hear from me from the guy perspective. You want to, you know, hopefully, Rachel has time to share from her perspective, okay? So, so they will be pretty cool. All right, external, very quickly. Peer pressure, family, social expectation, culture, movie, K-drama, folks, right? All these things have pressure on us, right? You know, I don't know about you, have I ever, you know, for me, right? I was the single until like 31, right? I've been to all my friends' wedding before I got married, right? And and for me, it's just like, uh, uh, you know, every time, you know, someone got engaged or someone, they'd be like, hey, Cliff, how come you're still single, right? That's the pressure, right? You know, maybe family say, hey, you should be, you know, so that's a like pressure from the outside and the pressure from the inside, right? Maybe we won't long to be in a relationship or in our fear, right? There's a lot of fear, right? What if someone, they reject us? What if we can no longer be friends? What if things doesn't work out? What if, is it really God's will, you know? And then we feel our own emotion. Is it love? Is it infatuation? You know, so so there's all these things. Plus, I want to last the point, it's unhealthy life scripts, right? So I'm not good enough. Am I pleasing people? All these things put making dating and courtship not as easy as sense. And everybody has their own story. So, you know, what works for me may not work for you. You know, for example, if you tell me, you know, just like us, Hey, Cliff, I find someone in Toronto, if you're in Singapore, I find someone in Toronto, perfectly wonderful, just like me, love Jesus and whatnot. And I want to go and visit. I'm like, whoa, you know, you know, I'll be like, hey, just wait about it and pray about it, right? Because I won't rush in, you know, but yet when they, if, if you see my, see how me and Weijia got together, and you don't understand the principle behind it, you'll be like, well, you know, Cliff and Weijia got together through the internet and it was God's will. So it must be my God's will too, because I'm not this person. Right, so that's where you really need discernment, right? And we really need to be careful of our decision, okay? Now, so here's the list, okay? I'm so sorry it's so long, but you know, I mean, if you go any many books, there's a lot of this. But so, so for me, the first and foremost is you gotta love God and seek Him first, okay? Matthew six thirty three, you have to love Him because if you don't seek Him first, right? You know, this is for me the key, and I'm always like. Like even my previous webinar on missions and discipleship, I focus a lot on discipleship because that is the most important relationship you have to focus on. If you're not focused on that, if you assume it's okay and move on to something else, be careful. Focus on that. Let let the let the relationship with Jesus with Jesus be so close and so well invested that that He's the anchor of your life. Okay, right. Second is having a strong Christian community. Psalm one thirty. Uh, right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So having a strong Christian community. I think that's very important before you even get in a relationship because you need other people to walk with you and journey with you. Make sure you ensure that you're not just like falling in love and do all sorts of crazy things and thinking it's God's will when maybe they'll be like, hey, you know what? Be careful, watch yourself, you know? And especially people who know you and they care for you enough to make you want to walk in Christ. That's the key, okay? Because, the, you know, people may know you, but if they don't care or they're not walking in Christ, they may not give you the right advice, okay? They want you to grow in Christ, that's incredible. Three point, deal with previous baggage, okay? Yeah, previous break breakup, previous not. Please work like you don't have to be perfectly heal, but please deal with that. Right? Because if you have previous baggage from previous previous relationship and you're gonna have the next relationship, just bring the whole thing into it and it's very messy, okay? Four, be intentional. Okay. I think this is uh being you know, you don't go in the relationship becoming a friend when you're not a friend, okay? So for me, when I'm when I'm you know, as you can see when I'm pursuing wage up, I wasn't just seeking a friend, right? I'm looking for more than a friendship, okay? But fifth, don't rush it. Take it slowly. You know, it's like it's like growing a plant, you know? You don't like rush the plant. Right? When there's a little seed, then you don't pull it out so they go bigger. Of course not. You take your time. Take your time. Because relationship takes time to build. And that's actually the nature of relationship, you know? And uh, date the same spiritual level and compatible calling. Uh, previous webinar, we talked about it, the triangle, right? You date a state as you move up, you move up, you know? Spiritual level the same is very important because relationship, dating and courtship is not a discipleship. 
Okay. So basically, we don't date non-believers because clearly that is not in the same spiritual level, right? Same spiritual level helps you grow with one another. Is there discipleship part of, of, of it along the way? Yeah, of course, I want to help Rachel go. Rachel wants to help me grow, but it's not the key, okay? I'm, you know, so 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 keep that in mind, all right? Seven, take time off to pray and reflect. How do you know it's God's will? Well, this is a good way. Take time off and pray and reflect, right? Uh, eight, time accountability. Same thing with number two. Like, whatever you do, don't do it privately, right? Whatever decisions you make, right? Like, Raja has her accountability people and mentors. I have mine, friends. We are accountable. We are open. Like, not open to everybody, but open to people who want to make a grow, walk in Christ, who love us, who care about us. Nine, walk in righteousness. This is the key. Do things rightly. That's why I mean by honoring God. No deception, no lying, no deceiving, none of that stuff. Just to get away ahead, right? Ten, reflect on your own previous relationship experience. This one is a bit hard. You know, is if you've gone through previous relationship experience and you didn't turn out the way you expected it, you know, you can learn from your mistake. It's not condemned or to judge, but rather to see if there are any consistent and healthy life scripts that cause you to make those issues, right? Cause that relationship didn't work out, right? And and to be honest, you may reflect it and realize that it's not your fault. That's okay too. I can explain that as I share about, about my own dating experience, right? But please reflect on it because there may be something that you're dealing, you're, 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 you're doing that you're not realizing and it's an issue, okay? Okay, so so this goes back to number two, having a strong Christian ministry help a lot, okay? So, you know, I don't talk about having boundaries or not. Okay, so so let's keep going on, right? So number one, why did I say root it, root it in Jesus? This is the reason why. Psalm 1-3, right? They said that a person who planted by streams of water Use root in every season, right? So if we're rooted in Jesus, whether things are going good and not good, we're still going to prosper. Why? Because I'm rooted in Jesus. I'm not rooted in the circumstance. I'm not rooted in wager. I'm not rooted in this. Okay? This is key. Okay? So here's the list again. So I'm going to use this list to reflect on our dating relationship. Okay? So before we're going to talk about me and wager, I'm going to tell you my Cliff's dating history. Okay? So, so this is going to be uh, embarrassing. Ah, sort of. I, 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 okay. So let's. <laughs> we just say, I, oh, okay. Don't worry. Rachel already know about this. So I guess. Uh, so, so let's just get started. Okay. So, so hey, what's my dating history, right? I, I say we reflect on the dating previous experience. Let's do it right now. Okay. So <laughs> this is so funny. This is so funny. <laughs> okay. So, so this is back in like university, right? You know, I, I'm still single. I don't know how to get a girl. Whatever. There's a girl I like through a friend of a friend. She went to a different university than me. And then uh, during like, we call it frosh week in the beginning of the school year, right? You know, everybody's party and whatnot. I decided to visit her and, and, and we go to like, you know, some, some event afterwards, right? So I was really in this intersection with Soto Meet, you know, and then I was so anxious. So within like, <laughs> within like I don't know, within like 15 minutes, I called like 20 times, you know, just one time after another, right? So imagine if, if you're the girl, right? You pick up the phone and you realize, listen. You know, what, 20 missed calls and it's from the same number, Cliff. What do you think, right? Do you think I'm a suitable guy? No, of course not. And you know what, guess what happened with that girl? She didn't like me. You know, even my friend said, uh, I don't think he likes you. And then so it didn't work out, you know. So I say, remember, lesson learned, right? Do not be anxious. Trust in God. Right? At this time, I wasn't a believer yet, but I just want to prove a point, right? After that incident, I never had called a girl 20 times. You know, and so, you know, so it is funny now. Maybe not so funny then, but it doesn't matter. But, you know, you learn along the way. Okay. So, so at, along the way, uh, if you, you know, when I shared before, you know, how I uh, did like a dating contest with my friend, right? At the very same time, my friend got this book, you know, which is a bit sad. It's about like how to get the girl, you know, whatever. And this book is very like, uh, and then I didn't keep the screenshot till now. That was off the internet. Sorry, you know. So so that so, so anyway, my friend, I got this book, right? On like how to date, you know, how to get a date and whatnot, get a girl. And it's actually very sad. It's actually like you know, you know, it's talk about like you're gonna be an alpha male, you'll be romantic, you gotta show, impress her when you talk, you be calm, you gonna be doing all this, right? You know. And guess what? It didn't work out. And 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 something I learned other way is that you gotta be yourself and trust in God, right? Be yourself, but you know, there's areas if you need to improve, please improve, okay? But be yourself, you know, be who you are, right? And along, along the way, I learned that too because that 
you know, office that didn't contest didn't work out to anything, right? So now here's this is before Richard and Richard know about this. So so you know after you know me bumping around trying to get in a relationship, not sure what to do, right? So when I, I finally become a Christian after university, I went to church, okay. So I I I, I met a girl there and like her and I pursued her. And guess what? She actually liked me. I'm so surprised. <laughs> right? So 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 my heart is like head over heel. I'm like, wow. You know, but that's one problem. Her parents doesn't like me. Why? Because I have a liver transplant. They think I'm gonna die early. So they, they pressure that that girl to say that, you know, I do want to be willow and whatnot, you know. And so um she ran away from home. The pressure at home was so bad, she ran away. You know, a month later, that relationship is over. To be honest, it wasn't even a relationship at all. It's not like we're going steady or anything. She just liked me. It's like before the relationship process, right? So as I reflect on it, before I used to say, I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. When I reflect more about it now, especially after read the book called um, Boundary uh, in Dating, I realized that I did something wrong. I did not set a boundary of my emotions, right? Because... You know, talk about honoring God, right? That very fact that she ran away from home, that's a bad sign, right? I could have said, you know, as a guy, I could have said, let's stop this right now. You're not doing something that's honorable. I don't think that's right. I think you should go back to home. But right? that's, I think when I look back, that's what I mean by honoring God, right? But I didn't. I just keep praying and hoping and, you know, hoping on, 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 on not much, actually, to be honest, when I look back. You know, the situation is bad. I even told my mom about it. And my mom said, yeah, if she, her parents, or she was in her parents' shoes, she would say the same thing. Wow, that hurt me a lot. But actually, when I look back, yeah, it wasn't a good situation to be with. And it actually didn't happen. And guess what? It didn't happen. It really broke my heart because I was so emotional. I was like, wow, it's all, my heart is over. I didn't, I didn't draw a clear boundary on my emotion. I didn't got my heart, right? And it hurt me for a long time. Okay, next thing. We talk about, sorry, taking a bit long. Talk about cleaning up baggage before wager, okay? This is not done by me. This is done by the Holy Spirit, okay? So before Rachel came into my life, right, before she wrote that comment on my blog, right? So um, I where I went to church has a church split, okay? So that was very painful because I'm also one of the leaders in the congregation. I can see both sides, you know, getting towards one another, and I'm like, there's no way it's going to turn bad. You know, so I seek the Lord and whatnot. And I remember I took a day off to pray. And, 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 the, and the Lord said, I can make, you know, I can restore the momentum. But why didn't you go and make, like, ask, you know, make peace with people who you have wronged, right? At that time, it broke my heart because the reason is a couple of weeks, a couple of months before, I was, I like another girl. But guess from my church, and guess what? My be- <laughs> my good friend came. He doesn't even go to my church, but he's a believer, right? But he came and took this girl from me and I was so jealous. My heart was so bitter. I was filled with envy and pain. I'm like, how can this be? I'm like, you know, I was already in triathlon. I'm, you know, leading church. I'm all this, you know, good stuff. And how can she, you know, like him and not me? It's so unfair. So God, it's so unfair. It's so unfair. You know, and I have this huge bitterness toward him. him. And when God, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me to make, I spoke to this, that's the first person I went to his house. I went to his house in tears, I asked for forgiveness. I, sh- I share with him what happened, and he forgave me. And 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 all, along the way, I had to call. I, mean, I call a girl who I went up blind date like three, four years ago. And because I went up blind date once, I never went back. I felt guilty because maybe she was bad, and she never know what happened. I never replied to her, so I I I I, I call her, and I I thought that was a, that was a hard thing. I call her. And, you know, it's just a voice message. So what did I do? I just uh, left a voice message saying that, I'm sorry, that time I did not follow up with you. It was not an honorable thing to do. That's right. I told him, like, it wasn't you, it was me. And then I just hang up, right? So, so, so by me, what I mean by cleaning out my, clear out my baggages, that's what happened. The Holy Spirit led me to a point where I had to clear out all my baggages with relationship. And then guess what happened? Rachel came into my life, right? And I think by God's grace, okay, we, we, at least in my heart, in terms of relationship-wise, it was pretty, like, that I wasn't bringing this bitterness into this relationship, right? So, so, uh, so you know, but before I continue, I just want to focus on Jesus, okay? 
you know, this is actually the first step in the first song, but seek first his kingdom is righteousness and all these things will added to you, right? You know, along that way, you know, being single, I surrender my life to God. I surrender my relationship to God. I told God that if I want to serve him for the rest of my life staying single, that's fine, right? And it, as, as, you know, con, con, contradicting his science, my really question is, can you surrender your relationship with his hands? Whatever that is, you're not sure you're seeking and you don't know what to do. Can you still say, let me surrender to your hand. Let you take control. Right. And so the discernment is whether are you letting him like the discernment, the white that is letting him to control, but the part that you need to play, you play. And you let God play his part, which is a huge part, right? Don't try to, you know, work your way out, just like how Abraham Sarah and then Ishmael came out. Right. You let him take control and see what happens. Right. And I think that is for me, like if there's anything you need to learn about this webinar, this is it. You let him take control. Just like anything else, you surrender your life to Jesus, right? That's what I mean by being a disciple of Jesus. You let him take control, right? So let me go back one more point before, right? You know, like, you know, this is what Paul say, right? Like, I mean, Galatians 6, 14, right? He never boasts anything about cross, about G about the cross and Jesus Christ on it, right? And then the world had been crucified to me and I to the world. You know, surrender to the Lord, part of that means letting God crucify you, right? Saying that I surrender all these things to you. And God can only crucify you if you let him to do so, right, to the world. So all the things that we say we need, we surrender to him. Let him to control. Let us find the joy in him first and foremost. And it goes from the head to the heart. It's on theory, theology, to really live and die for it. That is the key, okay? And I'll show you later how that will look like in our relationship because it actually happened, okay? So everybody's different. So, okay, let's start off, right, about our relationship, me and Rachel. Okay. Correspondence through email. In the beginning, we just you know send an email to one another, right? Which I was like, you know, that's one time I sent like five, six emails, right? Clearly, that you know I should set boundaries, you know, be so emotional, you know, I love to write, and so I was like so in love, right? So, so you know, when I first met Rachel through you know the email of like the comments, I'm like, when I read her blog, I'm like, wow, I cannot believe it. There's someone opposite of the world, you know. I was living in Toronto, she's in Singapore, right? And then, as someone across the world, that is like what I do. Love triathlon, love missions of God. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I cannot believe it. You know, so immediately what I want to do, I'm going to fly to Singapore and, and, and visit her, right? So, you know, I talk to, wait, I talk to, I, I talk to my close Christian friends about Raja, right? And I expect them to tell me that this is a dream, forget about it. But they just say, okay. You know, I didn't really tell them I'm flying, but just say, oh, I met somebody. Right. And then at the same time, Rachel talked to her mentors, right? You know, when I say I want to fly over, she told her mentors I'm gonna say no, right from the get-go. Right. So first thing, we have accountability. She have she has Christian friends and mentors to care about to care worry about her and her walk. I have friends I, I talk to, right? It's not something that we just do in secret, okay? So that's one. Right. And then she and then Rachel suggested, you know what, I, why don't we stop and take a two or three weeks off and pray about this relationship? Okay. So so I waited. You know, I didn't try to squeeze something in, share something. Oh, you know, oh, I feel God inspired me to say this. Okay. All right. So one more thing, just off topic right here. Sorry, uh, not off topic. To do and to do not this. One thing, please do not tell the other person that. Oh, I think God told me that you are. Uh, we are in a relationship. We want it. Right. We are meant to be in a relationship. Please don't do that. Okay. Because it is. I feel it's actually a bit of. Um, it tricks the other person. And and if God really, gonna put you guys together. Let God speak to him about this or her about this, right? Don't tell that person because you know what? It may, like I talked to my friend this morning. He said it happened to him once and it scared him off. The girl told him that, oh, God told me that we are in a relationship, right? Especially when you guys are not in a relationship at all, right? Because I feel like, you know, you may hear from, from the Holy Spirit and you put the, so much pressure on the other person, right? And that is not what we want. If you trust in the Lord, the Lord will speak to her, okay? So, Going back to this, right? I waited for a couple of weeks. I'm not rushing, right? Taking time, you know. Her mentors, we just even allow her mentors to read my email to her and my blog, right? So I have no problem with that. Why? Because what we say, we're accountable. I'm not like hiding things from them or tricking, you know, you know, you know, emotionally, how to kidnapping, we just, just, you know, keep it nice and neutral, right? So, um, the reason why we took a break is Rachel wanted to know if this is from God or just a random chance of infatuation because there's so much emotions. Wow, I can't believe we find someone, right? But there's still a lot of unknowns, 
I'm not coming to Singapore. She's not coming to Toronto. And we never met each other in person, right? So during this time, I, you know, during this email process, I also share with Raja my simple past, right? Like, you know, I'm not telling you that first day you're gonna tell every sinful thing you've done in your life, you know. But you know what? As I continue through the email correspondence, I opened up. I share with him that in university I struggled with alcohol. I also watched pornography when I was in university, right? I want Raja to know who I am, the good and the bad side. You know, you know, someday, you know, if you read the the way the worldly way people impress people is you know, you'll show your best side, right? You know. But the reality is that hey, we're all sinners. What are you struggling with, right? Are you willing to open up? Because if not willing to open up, it's not even truthful at all, right? So, but I'm not saying that first, you know, first that you want to share everything. You let that relationship grow when it is appropriate, you share, right? Okay? So, so my this is my thinking process, right? My thinking process is that my intention is not just friends, right? I, I really want to marry her. I'm so crazy in love. But yet, I can't express our relationship online with her yet. I cannot say, hey, let's be, a, let's, let's be like exclusive right now. No, 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 no. I cannot do that yet because I do not have a future. I didn't know what God is leading us, right? And I also don't want to plan on how we get together. It's easy for me to quit my job, go to Singapore, find an IT job, bam, I'm done, right? But if I did that, we wouldn't have the video and God would it be at work. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be work, right? For me, doing the right thing in this case is don't start a relationship that makes play on the emotion side. And don't plan to come over for her to come because her mentor said no, right? So, okay, okay, this is what I got from Richard's thinking process. Okay, this guy is so weird, which is true. <laughs> I'm not, no, no, no. it's weird, it's true. And then she's not sure what to make of it. So she let her, you know, let her mentors be involved in this process, which is great, right? Like I said, right, accountability. Having a Christian community, strong Christian community help a lot because we want to make sure that this is from God, make sure we're work, working rightly. And sometimes when we're in love, we don't see our blind spots, okay? Next point. Okay, so let's reflect using the five points, right? Spiritual maturity, right? I, in, in Canada, I'm still seeking God. I'm doing ministry in Canada, right? I'm still serving as a deacon. I'm still doing this, you know? I'm not like, hey, I'm gonna quit all this and come over. That's not spiritual mature, right? You know, and um, okay, yeah. And so, you know, Rachel is growing in Christ regardless of me. Even with this relationship doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. She's still seeking God, she's loving missions and so on. So both sides were still, you know, spiritual mature in that sense, right? So, okay, second, boundaries, sorry, boundary, right? So the reality is that physical boundary, 13,000 kilometers or 14,000 kilometers, like on the other side of the world, right? That's the physical boundary, right? You know, we tried to call on the phone, didn't really work out. And and so, you know, it, so, so there's emotional boundary. So I didn't tell her I love her. Okay, I told her that, can we be ministry partner? <laughs> I really don't know what I mean at that time. But like, I just I'm so in love, I don't know what to say. Right? I don't want to say I love you because it's so weird on email, right? I never met her anyways. But I did not try to sweet talk her, okay? That is the key, emotional boundary. I draw my emotional boundary, I keep it in check so that she doesn't, you know, get uh, uh, smitten up by, you know, my sweet words, right? Okay? Freedom. Ah, that's interesting. So for a while, we added friends on Facebook. And you know, like, I'm so sorry, I'm such a stalker, right? On, on Facebook, you know, you see when people message your friend and whatnot, right? So, you know, every time a male person, a guy message, you know, comment on Raja's post, I feel like, oh, is that guy liking Raja and whatnot? You know, you know, do I get jealous? Mm, a bit, but I came to realize one thing. I need to trust God in this thing. I need to give her freedom to choose whoever she wants to date. And during this communication process, if she get in a relationship, Fine, no problem. I walked away. Um, okay, and so, and, and second, I'm gonna trust in God. The reality is, I'm not coming to Singapore at that time. So I'm like, God, if this is gonna happen, it's up to you. But I'm gonna continue to communicate with Raja. I'm gonna, you know, and you know, and I'm not gonna work my way into it. Uh, I saw one message, uh, a question. I will answer that later. Okay, thank you for the message. I will answer that later. Okay. At the end, okay. So, so now responsibility. You know, I don't, I don't demand her to love me or start a relationship, right? I'm responsible for actions, and also I don't want to hurt her in the process. At the same time, I'm also not looking for a relationship in Canada, right? So I don't have like a plan B in case it didn't work out. I don't, right? And truth. The reality is that this thing on the email may all just be in my head or head. But the reality is that 
God may not be this God's plan may not be for us. Maybe we I stuck in man, I stay in Toronto, I stuck in Toronto, and she stay in Singapore, right? So that's why the point one is so important, right? Because my relationship is really in Jesus. That's where I find my strength and my motivation from, right? You know, and so you know I'm truthful. Well, I'm truthful to my feelings, and my actions are honorable, right? I my truthful to my feelings. What does that mean? I'm not pretentious just for a friend, right? I, I'm I'm interested in a relationship. I don't know how. I'm a bit fuzzy, but I'm not pretending as a friend. She, for her, I mean, I mean, I mean, it took her some time to realize I'm more than just a friend. But you know, interested in more than just a friend. Sorry, you know, and my actions are honorable. I did not try to sweet talk her. I don't know, you know, set her up and whatnot. Okay, next point. Okay, so next part, right? Canada to Cambodia to Singapore, right? So you know, I went I went on a mission trip. That's about like almost eight, almost a year, almost after we communicated for email, about eight months, I think, right? So, so let's just skip, you know, you, if you read the story, let me just go through the thinking process part, right? First of all, her mentor said yes for me to come to Singapore, accountability, right? So uh, my thinking process is that even though we met in person for like that four days, right? Even though the plane stopped two times, I got stopped two plane, two flights for me. <laughs> You're crazy for me. So I'm like, oh, that's so crazy, God. You know, you don't know, you don't understand because during that time it was Chinese New Year. And there's a lot, I, I was flying back to Hong Kong because I'm from Hong Kong. I got relatives, relatives there, sorry. And so there's so many angry Hong Kong parents that say, don't you know my kids going to start school and whatnot? And yeah, for me, I'm like, all right, I'm going to stay in Singapore. I'm going to stay in like Carlton. Great. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And so at the same time, I didn't ask her to be my girlfriend or tell her to wait for me. I'm still drawing boundaries because I know that I'm not even coming back. I'm not sure. I told her this, which she did not like at that time. I told her I like her a lot, but I'm gonna go home and pray about it. I need to listen to what God say, right? I cannot just quit my job and come. I could, but I don't think that's what God's plan. So I'm gonna stick with that, right? And, if, and I get it, even at this time, the relationship may not even work out. And that's okay, because we didn't start it anyways, right? So yeah, so, so basically responsibility. I cannot start a relationship until we're in person, like together, right? So even when I came to Singapore, you know, I have no place to stay. Wager I actually find a friend I can stay with. Boundary, physical boundary. We're not staying in her house with her parents or whatnot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right? I thought that was good for Wager, actually. Good idea. Right? And so, um, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 okay, so continue. Right? What the video didn't show, and I think this is something that for, uh, we didn't share in the video, but, for me, this is a very turning point. So this is after uh, I came you know, from Canada, I went back to Canada and then I came to Singapore, right? So I work with this uh, NGO called OMF, right? So so I, I came here and, and when I got here, you know, we already know the relationship is not just a friendship and, and we want to get married, okay? So, so, you know, we did the right thing. Uh, oh yeah, I approached her parents, I showed her dad. I forgot about that, but anyways, so, so basically her parents said no, uh, which, you know, when, she, when they find out that we're going to get married, okay? For, for a couple of reasons, first of all, I have no money, I have no career, and have a little transplant, quite high risk, you know? So I remember I was staying in the OMF compound when she, when she called me up about this, you know, she, you know, her parents are pursuing her not to, you know, relationship with me because of all this high risk areas, which is my health, right? Then she hang up. Hmm. So this is what I thought. Did God bring me to Singapore just to get dumped? I think it's dumped. Sorry, ED. Sorry, <laughs> just dumped, right? Huh, right? Because this is like the last time. The right? last time the parents, the girl liked me, but then the parents heard about it and said no. Then I'm like, oh, I experienced that before. I know how that feel. But this time it's a lot more painful. Because when I, when I came to Singapore from Toronto, I saw everything. I saw all my triathlon gifts, which I love. I gave up, you know, all my friends, my work. Hey, you know, liquefy. I mean, I saw I up all my investments, which I don't have much, right? Because uh, my role is a volunteer role, so I got to support myself. So I, I gave up everything. My family is all in, in Toronto, you know, so so do I came to Singapore just to get dumped? Is that how it works? So I remember that night. Um, no, it's just a path, you know, there's a lot of, choices you can make in life, right? I mean, God gives us the freedom to make good choices and not good choices, right? You know, 
I don't know if Rachel still want to go ahead with the marriage or to marry me. I thought it was over. You know, so what does I mean by putting surrender in God's hand and doing honoring God? Yeah, for example, let me tell you what things that occur in my mind that's not honoring God. I could either quit what I'm doing, you know, you know doing this role, you know, volunteer role, find a real job in Singapore, IT job, and climb up the corporate ladder to show her parents that I'm capable of making an income. That's number one. Two, I can go to her parents and convince them that I'm a good person, I'm a right person. Three, I can sweet talk Raja to say, you know what? We are adults now. Besides, God is on our side. My parents, our parents are not even believers anyways. I believe God is gospel for us, right? All these options are possible, but they're not honorable, right? Especially the last one. The last one sounds like, you know, you're doing something that's so righteous and holy, but it's not. Because actually, it's just deception, right? It's actually telling Weija to be dishonor her parents, right? So, so that is that is the thing we have to discern. So what did I do? So you know, I have nothing, nothing, no, no, nothing else in Singapore. I have no friends, nobody I know of. This is what I did. Okay, is it there? Um, you know how I say in the first point, sorry, to do this, I say trust in Him, like like put. Him first, and Christ first about everything. Have you ever read this Psalm, Psalm 42, 11? I'm sure most of you have heard it. You know, my soul, why are you downcast? Why so distributed, disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. But you notice the hope, right? It's hope in God, right? My first, you know the, the relationship I had before, which didn't really work out, almost relationship? I hope not in God. I hope things will get better. I hope that, you know what? God will pull some miracle. She may, her parents will change her mind. We get together. I hope that she may say, still stick with me, even her parents say no. Right? For me, I'm hoping in a situation. I'm not hoping in God. This time with Asia, I actually hope in God. This is what I did. Among the most painful moment or heartbreak moment, I I assure myself. I say, Cliff, you came here not because for Asia. Well, partly it is, but not really. You came here because God has sent you here to do His work in IT, in, I mean, for this IT department. So whatever happens to Raja, it doesn't really matter. It's painful, but it doesn't matter because you're here to do God's work. And at that night, I think like 1 or 2 a.m., you know, I was like in tears, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, like I said, putting hope in God. I came here to do God's work. I'm not, you know, whatever happens to me, that's okay. I'll live with it. So I gather myself up, and I worship with this song. It's a dear panther for water, so my soul longing after you. Okay, I sing really bad, okay, but, but just humor me for a bit. I sing this song in the middle of the night in tears or also in joy. Because I remind myself, put I'm hoping in God. I trust this is where God has led me, even though there's a heartbreak. Even though things I'm not sure the future will. I didn't know Rachel Wimmer. I don't think Rachel will talk to me at all already. But she stopped talking to me, right? That is what I mean by hope in God, despite all happened with the relationship. Because it can be bad, it can be not bad, the circumstances, that's part of life. But yet, you say hope in God, hope in God. So we need to learn how to hope in God, not hope in, oh, things will be better. I hope you don't know. Because you're, what, what, you're, what, you're in, like, what you're putting your hope weight in is a circumstance, and that will shift, right? But, you know, remember Psalm 1 3, right? The man who, man who, like, you know, this is a man who's like the living, you no, know, like a tree next to the streams of river, right? All seas and bare fruit, right? Because he's hoping God. God does not shift. God does not change, right? He's a strong tower. He's a rock. Until we get that into our hearts and have that decide to do so, circumstances will change. Emotions, and and I can tell you, emotions, relationship, emotions go up and down, right? It's like, oh, she looks at me. That means she likes me. Oh, I gotta talk to her. That means she likes her. You <laughs> know, it goes up and down all the time, right? But where do you find your rock? Where do you anchor your, your life in? Like if you anchor in that, then you'll be shifting all the time, right? And so, um, the hoping God is not hopeless. It's the most hopeful because I trust in God regardless of what happened. Whether in good times or times, I have to offer up my Isaac, right? And so, that point became my point to define my faith in Him. Okay, so, so what happened next? There's a turnaround, you know, um, Richard called me up or message me or something and say that, you know what, let's talk about this and pray. And so she's the one to get together and she's the one that's continue this relationship. 
right? So, so what do we do, right? Do we defy our parents and say, no, we're gonna get married anyways? No, what we do is first thing, we first thing we did was we talked to our, uh, the marriage men or mentors or friends. Yeah, so, so sorry, just to kind of backtrack a bit. We, like, after we got together within two weeks, we start, went to this uh, NPC marriage preparation course because you know, one of the person who's running it, Noah says, hey, you guys should come in it. Sure, why not? So, so, so they tell us their story of how they got together as well. Excuse me, 40 day, they started a 40 day Daniel Fast because their parents wasn't, so want to get married. And, and so for the Daniel Fast is you only eat uh, vegetables for 40 days and you pray, right? So that's what we did. Now that's no formula, right? I'm not saying if you do a 40 day fast, you'll get a relationship. That's all I mean, right? So please don't take that as like, oh, there's a formula I must do. The principle behind it, right? You know, we did not like uh, deceive our parents. We wait until they say yes. We try to be as honorable as we be with them, even though they say no, right? Guess what? I think, I think for, on the 40th day, her parents changed her mind, right? And then at the same time, I Skype my parents with Raja, and that is the first time my parents saw Raja. I, I told them beforehand, before I went to Singapore, oh, I have a friend, her name is Raja. Okay, so, and, I, and, I, and I told them that we're going to get married. And I remember my parents' jaw drop, and I told them it's a good news. But I also told them one thing. I told them that I don't want to pressure them to say yes. If they're not comfortable, let us know so that we will wait, right? This is what I mean by honorable. We wait until the both sides are ready. I'm not saying you have to wait, but I think that the key is how do we stay honorable with God by honoring our parents, even though when they, they don't, they, they are uh, non-believers and they may not agree with what you're doing. Okay, so that's what we do utmost to, to honor God, right? And, and, and because uh, something that I'm gonna talk about next webinar is that when you get married, it's not between two people. We think it is like me and her, me and Rachel are getting married, right? It's my family and her family coming together. Now, if there's issues beforehand, conflicts, when you get together, do you think those conflicts are gonna go away? No, they're gonna get worse, right? But the problem is that most of us, when you're so enough together, we just can ah, it's not a big deal, you'll be fine, I don't care. And then you struggle with those issues, right? So we need to learn how to stay honorable to our parents, especially to God, okay? You know, we need to kind of convince our parents that, oh, blah, 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 sell them, okay? When both sides are okay, we move on. Okay, so that kind of wraps up for today. Oh, I finished a bit earlier than, than I thought, right? So here's the list once again. And as I say, like your story may not be mine. For sure it won't be. For sure it won't be. Every story is still different. Even though if your story may not be like so kind of miracle, you know, God moves you from one continent to the next or stuff, it's still God's story. And so we need to trust and honor God. Okay, I see my way, my wife came on. So I assume that you want to share something? You can share something if you want.